So welcome back. And um, in the last video, we uh, we set up all of these buttons, but uh, they don't actually do anything yet. I can click on them, but nothing nothing happens. So what we're going to do here in this little lesson, we are going to set up the event listeners in our JavaScript. So something can actually happen. I also made everything a bit bigger here, so it's easier to see what's going on. Um, but what we want to do here, we have all of the buttons that we populated with um, with the names of the different cores that we got from the tonal dictionary, um, the core dictionary in tonal JS, which we imported here. So we need to add another method on um, on our object here, on our app object, because we need to add the event listeners. So I will create a new one called setup event listeners and and the first thing we need to add an event listener to we have these uh, the start node and we have the octave so I guess we'll just start from from the start node selector uh, to add a, an on change event listener to that so we already have that in a variable here and that is the start node selector so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to go back to the method we just created and I'm going to paste that, the start node selector, and I am going to add an event listener to it. Add event listener. And what is that event going to be? Uh, we're going to wait and we're going to listen for a change event. And that means that every time something changes up here in the start node uh, selector, uh, it will trigger. So every time it changes value, this this next piece of code will run. So I'm going to add a function, just an arrow function like this. And inside here, we will um, we'll write some code to let the program know what to do every time you change this uh, start note drop down menu. So we have to find out what uh, what the value of the start note selector is. So let me first up here create a variable. Uh, let's call it, what should we call it? Maybe selected start node. That's a pretty good name. I'm not going to give it a value yet because we don't know what it is yet. Uh, and go back into the setup event listeners method. So here we are going to put something into that variable and that was selected start node. We're going to set that equal to whatever the value of this start node drop down is right now. And that's the start node selector. So start node selector dot value. Yep. That's it. And then we should check and see if we get the correct data, the value, the correct value. So console log uh, selected start node like this. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go over here and then I will inspect and see if we get a result. So I'm going to go to the console and then I will change this. And we don't get anything. And that's because we never ever set up the the um, event listeners there. So <laughs> I always forget to do that. I'm used to everything happening totally automatically, but not in vanilla JavaScript. Okay, let's see if it happens, if it works now. And it does. Every time I change this, we console log the value of, uh, of the selected start node. So, so far so good. Uh, we need to kind of do the same thing with the octave. And uh, we already grabbed that too, so let's do exactly the same thing. Um, let's create a new variable let selected octave. I'm not gonna give it a value just yet. And we have octave selector, so I'm gonna grab that. And we're gonna go back to our event listeners and I will say add event listener. And that's gonna be the same event type. It's a change. Change. And what will we do? I 
need an arrow like that. Yes. We will do basically the same thing. We'll say selected octave is equal to octave selector dot value. And that's it. And let's try and console lock that as well. I saved it and let's see if it works. So I'm gonna. It works. Two, four, seven, D sharp, D flat. So everything works right now. Or not everything, but these two work. So. We just need to set up the event listeners on the buttons here. And um, we could go over each and every single one and uh, set up an event listener in that. But it's much, much easier just to target the this div we have. Where is it? This div right here, our buttons div, and then find out what the target is. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to my index.js file. I'm going to scroll up here and see that we already have this the buttons div put into a variable so let's use that i'm going to go back to our setup event listeners method and i'm going to type out buttons add add event listener and in this case it'll be a click because we're going to click on the buttons so we're going to listen for a click and every time someone clicks on the button we will run this code and what we need actually we need to get the event so i'm going to type in the event pass in the event here and let's in let's just try to console lock the event to see what happens let me try and click on one of them and yes we get the mouse event locked in the console here so that's not what we want we want to get the target so let's try that Let's try to console lock the event target and see what happens. Okay, now I actually get the button. But what you maybe have noticed already is that if you don't only click on one of the buttons, but if you click outside one of the buttons, we get this div class buttons. And that doesn't really work because we need the name of the core that we get from inside the element the content of the element of the button element. So we don't need this because that is just a list of all of the different buttons we have inside our buttons div. And here in the click event, before I console log anything, I want to add a little conditional. So we know that um, that it has this whole div has a class of buttons. So let's go and check if this div we're clicking on uh, has a class of buttons because then we're just going to return uh, and exit the function uh, without doing anything. So I am going to type if um, event target class list contains. So if this target that we're clicking on when we're clicking outside of the buttons has a class of buttons. Then we're just going to return. So nothing will happen. So let's check if that works again. I can click on the buttons that still works. But if I click outside the button, nothing happens. So but we want something to happen. And that's we will put that code right here. We want something specific to happen every time we click on one of the buttons because we want to get the information about this particular chord and we want to display that information about, about it up here, the notes in the chord and, uh, and the intervals that it's made up of. Um, but we, so we have to kind of, uh, create a new method for that, or I want to create a new method for that because it's probably going to be a couple of lines of code. So let's type display chord info that's our new or brand new 
method here and I want to pass something into this method. I want to pass the name of the selected chord. So before we can do that, we need to create a, um, a variable that contains the selected chord. So just like I did before, I'm going to create a new variable here and call it selected chord. And then down here in our event listener, I'm going to type out selected chord. And I'm going to set it equal to event target, the thing where you're logging out here. Let me just try again. We don't want to get, we just want the value of it. We don't want the, the button tags. So I'm going to go event target. And then I just want to get the inner text of that. And let's just try and see if that works. I'm going to try to console lock the selected chord instead. Whoops, what the heck is going on? That's better. Save it. Let's try and check. And I get the names of the chords right now instead of uh, all the other stuff we got before with the, with the tags. We don't need that. So this is great. So now we have the information that we need to pass into the new method that we created before, and that is selected chord. So first of all, let me get rid of this console log. And I am going to call this method. This display chord info. And I'm going to pass the selected chord to it. And just to make sure that it works. Got to make sure to type this in here as well. I will console log it out here. And it still works. Okay, so it's time to hook this up with tonal JS. And uh, what we need, we need to find out the intervals in this chord in the different chords that you click on. And we can do that by importing chord from tonal JS chord. And we already did this earlier. So I'm just going to uncomment this. And if you remember, we can get some different information about a chord from, from that. We got an object from it if we pass it a chord name. So let's try that out. Let's, um, let's go down here and inside our display chord info. First of all, I'm just going to try and console lock chord and selected chord. Let's see what happens now. And we do get our object that we can uh, check out and see we have the intervals and that's actually exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for the intervals of this chord because that is what we want to display here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, grab the intervals from the chord and then put it into this div we have all the way on the top, this one here. Let's do that one first. Um, I want to go and check out what the name of that one is. It's called intervals in chord. So we're going to need to grab that in our JavaScript first. I'm going to put that all the way up here and intervals in chord is equal to document query selector and this class name. Uh, and then we can go ahead and we can give it a value. So if we go back down here, we can go ahead and we can set the inner text to chord that we imported from tonal.js and select chord. And then we should get access to the intervals here. Let's see if that works. And something's happening. And you can see it's comma separated because it's uh, it's an array that we're getting. Um, so let's do some, something about that. To make it a little bit more simple, I think we should put that in its own variable. So let's call it, let's call it chord intervals. So let's make a variable called chord intervals. And let's set that equal to what we just found out before. Chord 
and let's pass it the selected chord. And then let's access the intervals. Just like this. And then let's try this out. Um, let's say we want the intervals and in chord that we grabbed before. Uh, and just set it equal to this. It should be the same result, but uh, it's a little bit easier to understand. So let's try that. And it still works. So what I want to do here instead, to make it look a little bit better, let's just take this uh, array and let's join it. And let's join it with this. And that should that makes it look much, much better. So now we have we have it up here looking way better than before. Uh, and in the next video, I will show you how to take these intervals and transpose them so we actually get the correct cores that are selected up here. So if we select this and 4, we have E in the 4th octave, we should get the correct notes up here for that chord. See you in the next video.